It's an awesome day out. Let's go for a ride. So, uh, extreme trip number two. Um, this today is going to be with uh, Liam Hennessy, who's the owner of Applehead Studios. He's probably, I, I would think, one of the most, one of the more innovative um, photographers here in Halifax, and probably even Atlanta, Canada, for that. I've actually known Liam for a number of years now. We graduated high school together in Sydney basically doing his day-to-day -day accounting now for probably going on geez a little over two years now so so uh, yeah we're gonna be uh, taking Liam on a, a little trip something that uh, I think is I don't I don't want to say near and dear to his heart but something I'm, I'm sure he enjoys doing um, get to try out something new and you know maybe for uh, place we're going maybe it'll turn into a sale but it was a we'll wait and see and uh, after that we're uh, we're gonna have a little uh, drinky poo at a place downtown because um, uh, Liam uh, at least Liam is a, a aficionado I would have to say of rum um, I think uh, he likes different types and I don't know if he's had uh, rum from this new distillery downtown but um, he's going to today so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens so tell me about uh, Iceland uh, that, looked, like, that looked amazing you know what there I I'm still not recovered from Iceland because it was just so otherworldly it was it was an incredible experience to work with our clients, uh, MRB, Mike and Willow, and uh, to work as a collective team, the five of us, in the RV for a week. <laughs> it was it was amazing. It was just, so we went over and, and Mike and Willow just got married uh, two years to the day after the first time that they were on top of uh, this volcano in the Westman Islands. Cool. So we trucked up there at uh, midnight and they just had a little ceremony and we shot it, shot video and photo for them. And it was just, it was amazing. And then we took off for a couple days sort of on our own, exploring, and found this campground and hung out there for two days because it was in the middle of nowhere, no cell coverage, no internet, no nothing. Nice. Yeah, it was gorgeous. So we're already trying to get back and trying to figure out if we can put together this package for people that might be interested in doing the same thing, just because it was such a beautiful experience. 24 hours of daylight. It was crazy. Yeah. So, going back to early 90s, yep. um, Sydney back Academy. in Sydney Academy. I rock, tried to find like an Academy or a Cape Breton t-shirt. Rocking an old school. I just ran um, out of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't fit in anything <laughs> anymore, anyway, if I had anything. Um, so, is, is this where you pictured I'm sure this is where you pictured me. <laughs> what did you want to be? I had where, no idea. Oh, you didn't know? I, I, you know what, to be quite honest with you, I I knew it was going to be, be business related. Yeah. I just kind of said, I'm never going to be a friggin' accountant. And well, <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> what's really funny is I remember um, Michelle Spagnoletti. Is that? Yes. Do you remember her? She was, she was a photographer. She was the yeah. photographer yeah. for yeah. the Academy paper that I, I don't yeah. think I really knew that we had. <laughs> And I just, I, as I look back at that, I never, the thought never even crossed my mind that it was a career. There was no digital back then. Yep. It was crazy. So I was headed for a veterinary school. I had thought about dental, but it was only because like you just, you got a job and you grew up and you went to college yep. and, or university and you had to pick a profession. Yep. I always liked the sciences, so I was sort of headed for veterinary school. And then you, <laughs> I always <laughs> describe myself because we were in the IB classes, right? The yes, International Baccalaureate. Yeah, yeah, which is the smart class. Yeah. But I always describe myself as like the dumbest kid <laughs> in the smart class. So it's like <laughs> you and Emma and all those guys with like the well, top grades. I didn't grades. take full IB, but you took some, I right? Took some, not yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. What did you take? Oh, for the numbers ones. Yeah, probably. Math. Yeah, there's a few, a few of the numbers ones. Economics. Ugh. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it so, didn't really get me anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then you like after high school, you and I sort of just went in totally different paths, and then it was however many years that I saw you at your first office, right? We were looking for a location to that, shoot yes. that. Well, I think I first reached out. My wife was looking. Patricia was looking for a photographer for something. It might have been when she was at one of the charities, which was before, right? And then we kind of connected, and then I remember yep. seeing you were looking for an office space um, location. Right. And I offered up my clients. Yeah. <laughs> they right, were gra graceful enough to allow it. Well, Patricia, was that, uh, was it something for the cancer? Can Canadian Cancer Society. Right, yep. right, okay. Um, yeah, and kind of went from, from there. Yeah. But uh, I never took you as a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no. I mean, you know, I've had a million jobs. I started at Dairy Queen. I was a bank teller with Credit Union. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> adventure tourism I did. Uh, I worked with the family. Uh, my folks owned a fireplace shop in the U.S. in New Hampshire for 10 years or so. So I was involved in that to okay. some degree. And then pharmaceutical rep for seven years, which was, I joke about, you know, what a contrast life is now and then. Um, but I learned a lot from that. I really did enjoy that job. And then just decided that, you know, this was, I was making some money doing this and, and my friends and family said I was really good. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, hell, I, it'd be fun to own a business. Oh, I was also a massage therapist too. Okay. Right, for a, a Seriously? Very, yeah, very small time. <laughs> my very first client in Halifax uh, was a guy and uh, he came in and I was so nervous that I poked him in the eye with my thumb, and I mean poked him. I touched his brain with my thumb, and he shot up off the table and was like, what the f***? Sorry, what the hell is going on? He was really upset, and I was just like, this is not for me. So, you know, always had that kind of entrepreneurial something, and it just happened to be photography. Cool. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah, we're taking yeah. it to the uh, we're taking it to the recycling plant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sweet. That's the one job you haven't. No, done. you know yeah. what? That's <laughs> not actually true. I did have that job for very for one day. It was out in Spryfield. I got all dressed up. It was like in between. It was summer in university. I got all dressed up. I remember it was a pair of khakis and a this light blue shirt. And I showed up at the recycling depot for an interview. But the interview was actually just a work for a day. <laughs> And I was disgusted with it and just never really showed up. Yeah. Never got paid for the day, never showed up again. So technically, I did have, have the job. Right. Cool. Yeah. We're getting close to a motorcycle shop. Yeah, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> I do know that you love motorbikes. So uh, I figured, uh, yeah, let's uh, give it a whirl. And <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, uh, Maybe they get a sale out of it today. <laughs> yes. No, the last thing I need is more motorbikes. <laughs> Well, you know that I've had, uh, I won't say bad luck, just my experience with accountants before hooking up with you was a complete disaster. It was, I didn't ever feel like I had a handle on things. I didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't know if, I just felt like nobody cared. <laughs> this is gonna sound totally canned, but like, it was just like, it was almost this non-verbal transaction of numbers. And you give them paper, they give you back paper. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, I was really looking for like this, <laughs> your term, CFO for hire, like someone to be involved and be like, you know what, I don't think it's a good idea if you upgrade the studio or buy this gear or whatever. There were a couple things where you were, you said no, they were it was a bad idea. I can't like remember when we were was. looking to buy something in another province, and I told you why. <laughs> yes, that's what it <laughs> why was. Why are you going to spend money at that? <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's when you can do like X, that. Y, and Z, and basically do it yourself. Right. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I just needed someone that's, you know, looks at it from your perspective, and that's been a huge asset. The other thing is that I don't have anything to do with any of the money anymore. It's you and Jen deal with it all the time, and it's just, it's not what I do, it's not my specialty, yep. it's what you do. So you're, to us, you're like an employee. Not an employee, you're the, you're the boss, I guess. <laughs> no, Jen's, Jen's the boss. Jen's the boss, yeah, right, yeah. So yeah, like, you know, a, a team member, really. It's, it's, 
invaluable. And you know how many people that I've sent your way. Yeah. Over the no, last little sure. while, people that start up and like, and we're just a small little, like I know you deal with a lot of hotels and stuff, um, but we don't feel like we're a small client. You know what I mean? There's only like yeah, seven it's or well, and that's not what we're trying to. We don't have small or big clients or clients, right? Right. So, yeah. And that's really that's what our focus is. Yeah. Let's get you on a bike. <laughs> Here's a waiver. It's telling you whatever happens to the bike while you're on it is your responsibility. Do you accept? Keith, do we accept? Sure. <laughs> don't wreck Somebody it. Somebody gotta accept. <laughs> don't wreck it. Hi. Hey. Now flip it around and put you on. The no, yeah. that's not happening. <laughs> Oh, Freedom Cycle's the best. We sell everything. We have motorcycles, ATVs, side-by-side, -side, snowmobiles, jet skis, trailers. We're just starting the tractor industry, but great customer service. We'll always take care of people. Oh, this is amazing. I get to take well, this a... this is like a zero in terms of I your get, extreme, well, extreme trips. Yeah, right now, as far as extreme, it's... it's pretty tame but let's see how the ride goes I'll come back with a look of terror This is amazing. Bacardi, sipping lightly. When I walk inside the party, I'm gonna get me up. I'm gonna get me up. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so am I. I'm a salesperson. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the best! That's the best! That's <laughs> never driven a motorcycle before in my life. <laughs>
I'll take it. Trying to get some footage of me being pulled over by the police. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never ridden a bike like this before, but uh, this was super comfortable. I loved all the bells and whistles. My bike is usually is 40 years old, so it doesn't have any of this. Um, I, uh, if my accountant said yes, I would buy this bike in a flash. Yes. Keith, are we good to go? <laughs> sure. <laughs> your let's, money. Let's do it. Let's take it. <laughs> This was uh, this was amazing. What a We're not done yet, man. We what? Gotta, we gotta uh, we gotta water this one down. Well, <laughs> yes. This is the yeah, best day of work it. ever. Hey, I put my work in. Where's my beer? Oh, come, come on, on to the drive. Let's go. It's a road trip. Yeah. That was awesome, man. Uh, I can't. I had no idea. You said bring your bike. <laughs> And I was like, I think he's taking me for a motorbike ride. Most clients would like send a bottle of wine or, you know, send you a thank you card for whatever. And you're taking me out driving uh, $30,000 motor <laughs> motorcycles around. I'm not buying you one. That was amazing. <laughs> no, that's all right. I got to ride one. Yeah. I love this idea. The first two uh, I knew right off the bat were Patty yeah. and you. <laughs> Did you, are you happy with the Patty one? Yeah. Did she, she seemed like she had a really great time. Yeah, no. It was, yeah. We, uh, seen it. Yeah, we drove by her where she got first where her first kitchen was and right where her next kitchen's gonna be. Yeah, and that's exciting for her. So yeah, no, it was uh, it was good for her. And, um, I think it, it again, it really just kind of um, it helps to give potential clients for you a little peek into what it's like for us to be your clients and what an asset your business brings to our business. Well, I mean, that's the best advertising for me. Right. It's, uh, you know, I can put billboards up all over the place, right? But it's right. not going to do me any justice. Right. Um, you know, actually, people that use our service and are happy with what we do for them, that's the best advertising. Right. And, and the way I describe it to people is that I'm not scared <laughs> when brown envelopes show up from the government. <laughs> I know that it's all taken care of. We don't owe taxes. We're not behind in taxes. Our HST is paid quarterly, always on time. If it's late, it's usually my fault for not giving Jenny receipts or whatever. But that's the other thing too, is that, you know, I, I get to look at the numbers at the bottom and that's all really that matters to me. And you guys just handle all of the other stuff that whatever makes up that bottom number. Yep. Are we in the red or not? <laughs> That's all I need to know. But the, the CFO thing, CFO for hire is I think um, as an entrepreneur, that's easier to grasp what you do versus then saying an accountant because I'm in a lot of, um, a lot of forums on Facebook with you know other wedding photographers or just photographers in general. And there's always accounting questions, you know, um, the most recent one I read was, you know, my photographer or my, my photographer, my accountant just gave us uh, the final number that we owe and he you know, hasn't been advising us along the way and we don't really have conversations. And I, you know, what I know now is that's not really an accountant's role, that's more of this CFO for hire where you have more of a, uh, not, well, I guess a, more of a say in the business and how it operates and makes suggestions and so forth. It doesn't even have to be a CFO for hire role. Just somebody that's actually gives a right. <laughs> about your business, right? right? Exactly. Um, and that's I got I did this because I like working with business. I like working with people. Yeah. I like working with business owners, figuring out why the hell they got into business, why they're doing what they're doing, and if I can help them along the way, either a little bit or a lot, yeah. then I'm. Cool. Yeah, I'm and, happy and, with that, right? And you've been great to like meet up. You know, I, I recommended you to pretty much anyone that asks about an accountant, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But you know, we're you not could, the right fit for everybody. Right. Um, right. Exactly. Right. And vice versa, right? Sometimes clients aren't the right fit for us. Right. Um, but when you do have that fit, it, it tends to work. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So, so and, rum is your. Uh, yeah, you know, so. It, like, you know, it was always just like a rum and coke or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge whiskey guy. I don't, you know, I don't really have an advanced palate for it, sophisticated yep. palate. But I've uh, been drinking, like, some, some finer rums. I really, I really love it. 
her liquor makes me crazy, so I stopped drinking. So <laughs> I, that's I was gonna say that. We have a general rule. My buddy Jeff McLean from home has a rule: uh, no rum until midnight. <laughs> Looks like this might be uh, fun stop number two. Hi, hey, I'm Keith. Hey, Nice to meet you. What was it? Liam, nice yeah. to meet and you. Keith. And Keith. Keith. Right? Nice to meet you. Distillers, Alex. We did or did not know he was going to be on film today. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, do you want to sort of walk them through? I could definitely do that. How yeah. we do things here, sure, sure. and then I'll meet you at the bar. All right. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. And we're in fact, all of our grain comes from uh, Nova Scotia farmers. There's still uh, his name Tess. So uh, when we're running a distillation, both with our low wines and with our uh, spirit run, we're sh basically paying attention to the first runnings of the distillate that come off the still, constantly smelling them uh, in order to get an idea as to when that undesirable part is kind of like subsiding and turning into what we call the hearts, which is the, the desirable, uh, more pure ethanol section of the distillation. What does it taste like? <laughs> <laughs> And so does Compass want to be known as like the, the premier distiller mm -hmm. of say rum or gin or just kind of well, a distiller? Well right now we've got a huge name going for us in the gin department. Gin? Okay. Our gins have won many many awards right. so it kind of unintentionally has kind of been steering towards gin. We didn't really have the intention of being a gin house but it's going more towards that way. Cool. But our whole mission is just to make the best spirits possible. So we'll make anything, but it has to be, <laughs> nice. it has to meet our standards <laughs> right, and right. high quality. Yeah. Um, if it's not, we won't sell it. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, <laughs> this is a perfect day. <laughs> So this is uh, this is some aged gin that we pulled out of a barrel um, uh, at Christmas time. So it was in a barrel for about six months. Gin, you said? Aged rum. Sorry, oh, okay. has a lot of the wood character. So like oak and vanilla. Is that the big one? The little one down right there. Oh, okay. Look at that. So we literally just started an experiment. That's like that. Yeah.
the it's pretty funny that we end up at Compass. The, the, have I ever told you the story about how Applehead? No. How we got the name Applehead? Um, so people ask a lot, you know, how did you come up with the name Applehead? And again, I think I just slurred it. <laughs> going to compass um, but I, my answer is pretty it's a canned answer and it's drunken immaturity and it was from back in the days of Sydney back in Sydney before digital cameras and everything we were at my buddy Jeff's place drinking and uh, and fudge Keith fudge passed out in a chair uh, in the early evening of a night and you know he's kind of asleep in the chair and that was it, he was done for the night. So we started to put things on his head and take pictures. And this was the days of like, you know, the wind up and snap pictures. Right. And so one of those things was a donair. It got progressively um, more disgusting from there. But one of the <laughs> things on his head was an apple and we ended up printing it. And this print stuck around. And uh, I still have the digital version of it to this day. But so I wasn't a photographer at the time, but a couple years later, when I started taking photos, my buddy Jeff says, oh, you know, what the, what the hell do you think you are? Like Applehead Studio or something? And I was like, yes, that's exactly what it is. And that was it. That was that was how cool. the name came to be, yeah. It's funny. Eh? Drunken was, immaturity. Yeah. <laughs> it's I didn't, funny how it's material like, just comes to be, right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't want it to be Liam Hennessy Photography no. because I, I never really wanted it to be me specifically or have my name, just something that I could hide behind and be a little more... Um, creative yeah. behind, I guess, not just have to be me. So, anyway, yeah, drunken, <laughs> drunken immaturity. Drunk immaturity. Yeah, and here we are at uh, Compass <laughs> Distillery. Hashtag drunken immaturity. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that you're doing these extreme road trips. We keep it, it's accidentally become extreme. Yeah. And now you're yeah. extreme. <laughs> well, that's and we said this in the last one. Uh, he Adam wanted to call it stream trips, and I said no. And I, Come on, man! Like we <laughs> need up it a little bit, right? right? Yeah. So yeah. it became extreme. Yeah. Uh, trips and uh, I love it. Yeah. And then, uh, this is number two. <laughs> You're gonna have to like raise the bar every single time to make. I don't know, man. More, so it was, more so extreme. So it, was, so it, was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Like maybe flip. Other than it. throwing you off a cliff or something. Right. <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> Hope you had a good time. Oh my god, this is fantastic. I get to go home at 2.24 with, with a full a bottle of rum. slur. I was working with Keith. Yeah. <laughs> but what's really funny is you want, you know, when you're looking for an accountant, you know, for me, one of the, the requirements is you don't want someone that's kind of wild and reckless and just kind of blah in your face. You want someone, I need the opposite of us. We need, you know, uh, confident, quiet, reserved. But not uptight and stuffy. No, God, no. Not uptight and stuffy, no. Real. Yeah. I mean, I we both wear jeans, right? So yeah. that's, a, that's a good fit. I, yeah. burned, I burned all my ties when I quit, so. It's, it's, I have this conversation with a lot of people. Um, I cannot tell you one client we have yeah. that wears a suit. Right. And you know I do what? not have one client, period, yeah. that wears a suit. Yeah. And I, yeah, Every I, one of them has jeans or khakis, full stop. Yep. That's it. And that's probably, we should just cut the video at that because <laughs> that's the perfect, like, way to kind of sum it all up, you know, with regard to, like, the kind of company that you are and the clients that you have and stuff. It's just, it's just real people that own businesses that need someone to kind of help them. That's basically it. Manage it's, their money. Uh, that's it. We're out of be better. Cheers. I don't even know what to say. It was incredible. I'm going home with a tiny little bit of a slur. A full bottle of rum. <laughs> uh, extreme road and dream, trips. And dreaming about a $30,000 motorbike. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Time for my music.